In a recent video where I photographed some feathers and a bison skull on New 55 film, I was plagued by a frustrating and costly light leak. I have since diagnosed the source of the problem, and so in this video I wanted to talk about how to find and fix light leaks. Now even if you never shoot large format or peel apart film, I think this video might be useful to you if you're ever having to chase down a light leak, because I'm going to be talking about it in broad terms, like how to approach troubleshooting a light leak regardless of what type of camera you're using. But first, let me just recap what happened with my system here. So I was using my 4x5 camera with a Polaroid holder shooting New 55 PN400 film. I was photographing uh, still lifes essentially in my office here using window light with my camera suspended above the subject shooting straight down. And I kept getting this light leak from the upper left corner of the image, sometimes also the upper right, but mostly the upper left corner of the image. And it just kept happening, but the most frustrating thing about it is I would implement a fix to try and uh, get rid of the light leak and it would like work for a couple of frames, but then the light leak would just come right back. So it's like my fixes would work, work, and then just suddenly not work. The most frustrating one of all is at one point I just resorted to draping my dark cloth over the camera, keeping it in complete darkness so that the light leak just couldn't get in any other way. And like that worked, but not 100% of the time. I would still get like one or two frames with a light leak even when the dark cloth was draped over the camera and it worked all the rest of the time. It's just like one or two frames it didn't work and that can be extremely aggravating because the fixes seem to be working and then just suddenly they don't work. Um, and so I really needed to fix this light leak for good. Now when it comes to troubleshooting a light leak, you kind of have to work purely on a process of elimination. Uh, just eliminating it can't be this, it can't be this, it can't be this. And you want to start with the things that are the most uh, obvious and the easiest to eliminate. So taking my 4x5 system here for instance, there's basically three places the light leak could be coming in. One could be a faulty film pack. Two could be a leaky Polaroid holder. And the third could be a leaky camera. But taking something like a medium format system, like perhaps my RZ67 here, if I'm getting light leaks, it could come from mishandling of the roll film. It could come from a leaky film back, or it could come from a leaky camera. If we're talking 35 millimeter film, it could be a leaky film canister. Very unlikely, but I suppose it could be that. Or it could be the camera, uh, light seeping in through one of the seams, like the film door on the back, or perhaps the lens, or maybe even the viewfinder. So regardless of what camera system, you want to break it down into its component parts so that you can work on one section at a time. Um, now, of course, it helps to look at the light leak and see if you can deduce anything about it uh, simply by looking at it on the film. So for instance, let's say you're trying to troubleshoot a light leak on a medium format camera using 120 film. If the light leak only really occurs at the first couple of frames or the last couple of frames or both, then it's most likely mishandling of the film. When you're loading it up, it's, it's coming a little bit loose, it's unraveling a little bit and lights leaking in, or perhaps when you're finishing the roll and you're tightening it up and sealing it, maybe you're doing it a little too loose and light leak is coming in from the edges of the film itself. But if you're not getting any light leaks throughout the middle frames, maybe it's not the camera. Maybe it's just mishandling of the film. Or maybe you need to load your film in dimmer light or take it out of the camera in dimmer light. Now with this new 55 I was shooting, the light leak was uh, very characteristic and it told me a lot about where it was coming from. Because when I looked close at the light leak, I could see that the light leak was actually casting shadows of uh, dust across the film. Very long shadows. Like I said in the video, it was like a low setting sun. Now that's very informative. That tells me that the light leak has to be coming from very close to the film, basically right next to the film, which helps me eliminate some things on my camera. First off, it's probably not the bellows probably not the lens. Anything from the film forward, it's unlikely to be coming from that because those light leaks are probably going to be more diffuse or they're going to be coming at an, at an angle that isn't going to create those long shadows. So I focused my efforts on the back section of the camera and the film pack itself. I could also tell that the light leak was coming from the lower right part of the camera because the light leak was hitting the top left part of the image and since the image is recorded upside down, then that means the light leak had to be coming down from here. So that's where I uh, focus the bulk of my efforts. So knowing now roughly where the light leak is coming from, I can start to eliminate 
uh, possibilities of, of what it might be. And I wanted to start with the camera. Basically, if I can uh, confirm that the camera is not the source of the leak, I can start working on other things. There's a very easy way to eliminate the camera. All I have to do is photograph uh, the same scene, the same subject, same setup, using just regular film in a regular film holder. So I did just that. I actually exposed four sheets of some expired Fuji Velvia, um, just in regular film holders, so not the Polaroid holder. I did the exact same uh, subject, uh, photographed it twice, but then I also did two exposures um, where I pulled the dark slide out, but I didn't trigger the exposure. Uh, I was basically just trying to eliminate the lens as being the source of the light leak, even though I was quite certain it wasn't that far forward. Doesn't hurt to eliminate one more thing if I can. Now, all four exposures had no light leak, so that means it's probably not the camera that's leaking, because it stands to reason that if I'm getting the light leak from the camera, that leak would show up regardless of what type of film holder I'm using and regardless of what type of film I'm using. So that eliminated the camera part of it. Now I could focus on other aspects. My second suspicion was the film pack. And uh, I know I said this in the video and I actually eliminated it as an option in the video, but I wanted to check again. Maybe these are faulty. Maybe the manufacturing isn't quite up to par and the light leak is actually happening around the clip uh, before or after the exposure. And so the way I eliminate that as a possibility is I just have to open a box and do 55, which hurts real bad knowing I'm just gonna do it for the sake of uh, chasing a light leak. And I just took one of these um, packs outside in direct sunlight and just kind of exposed it to the sun at different angles and then developed it. There was no leak. So uh, again, shame on me for doubting New 55's quality control because the film pack was not leaking at all. That's not the source of the problem either. So that just leaves the Polaroid holder. Um, and this one was a little trickier to diagnose because I didn't want to um, diagnose it in the camera. I wanted to see if the Polaroid holder by itself was leaking. So, and there's this big gap here, obviously, so I can't really tell if the light leak uh, is happening if I got this big gap here. So what I did is I took sheets of black cardboard, cut it to the size of this opening, placed it over the top, and I sealed it up as best I could with electrical uh, vinyl tape. So I sealed it around the edges, sealed it around the top. The top was the hardest part because there's a ridge on the top of this, um, the Polaroid holders. That's where it locks into the, uh, the 4x5. And so I had to tape around that and I knew that was going to leak a little bit because it's just not a perfect seal. But I sealed that up with um, construction paper, took it outside, put in a sheet of new 55 film, pulled the dark slide and then just held it out in the sunlight for a little bit. And if that same leak showed up, it would confirm that it is in fact the Polaroid holder that's leaking. So I brought the film back in, developed it, and sure enough, there's the leak. In fact, it's bigger than ever and there's even more leaks. So it turns out my Polaroid holder was leaking like a sieve. So next step is see if I can fix it, see if I can get rid of that light leak. So I disassembled the Polaroid holder and I shored up some parts of it with uh, layers of that vinyl electrical tape where I thought there might be more gap than there should be. Then after reassembling the holder, I ran a strip of electrical tape around the sides and bottom edges to seal up any cracks that might be leaking from the outside. So with the thing newly sealed and surely fixed, uh, I brought the holder back outside, loaded up with a sheet of new 55, pulled the dark slide and exposed it to sunlight again. After developing the film, uh, I'm happy to say that light leak was gone. Um, so it seems that my uh, electrical tape did handle the problem. But you'll see there is a, uh, a big faded light leak coming from the bottom of the print, which is actually the top of the holder. So it'd be like that. Um, I'm actually not worried about that at all. I think that's just the um, construction paper that I put over the top. And remember the top ridge here made it kind of difficult to get a perfect seal with the electrical tape. So I'm sure that's just because of the um, pieces of uh, construction paper I had over the, the opening here. Um, that surely should go away when I'm using this in the camera. So uh, confident now that the Polaroid holder is now fixed of any light leaks, I attempted a couple more shots of the feather. And you would think that light leak should certainly be gone because if I brought this thing out into, into direct sunlight with just some uh, construction paper over the opening and the light leak was gone then, surely it would be gone when I'm exposing in my dark office. 
And the light leak was mostly gone, but it wasn't gone completely. So again, I'm back to pulling my hair out. Now, although the light leak wasn't gone completely, it was toned down quite a bit. So that means my electrical tape fix was very close to working perfectly. It just wasn't quite there. The good news is I did isolate the problem. I know it's coming from the Polaroid holder and I know it's coming from one of those corners and perhaps with a more careful um, and proper fix to the seals, maybe it'll go away completely. But I didn't end up getting to that point because uh, Sam Heiser at New 55 very kindly offered to exchange my, um, my Polaroid holder for a new one. Uh, so I sent back mine. He was very curious to see if he could figure out um, where the light leak was coming from. He told me I can't see anything out of the ordinary. So apparently it's, uh, it stumped him as well. But he gave me this other Polaroid holder. And um, now all I needed to do was test this one out. So I recreated the same studio situation. Um, I don't have the feathers anymore. I got rid of them as I talked about in the previous video. So I needed something else to photograph. So I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna do some light leak tests, I might as well shoot something kind of cool. So I photographed this old uh, uh, TLR camera I have on display here. I have a bunch of vintage cameras on display as I'm sure we all do. Um, so I decided I'd photograph one of those. And with the new Polaroid holder, I'm thrilled to say there's no light leak. It came out great. And I was able to recreate it again and again and again and again and again. I went kind of crazy. I photographed a bunch of different cameras I have around my office here. Um, the pictures all came out great. There's not a single light leak. So this thing is tight as a drum. I just needed a new Polaroid holder is all. Um, I really like the pictures. The prints look good. Uh, the pictures look good. Uh, I'm kind of addicted to doing them now. I know I went a little crazy, um, but I kind of want to do these same pictures with my RZ67, with my GA645ZI, with my Shenhao. I really like these kind of front and straight side view pictures of, uh, of these really cool looking cameras. So I may undertake a project at some point exposing a bunch of new 55, um, just creating documentation of all my cameras because um, I think they look pretty cool. But uh, I haven't convince myself to pull the trigger on that kind of moolah just yet. Um, Cause that's gonna be a lot of sheets of new 55 if I photograph all of my favorite cameras. It's a lot of cameras. Um, so I diagnosed the problem, I figured it out. It's there, it's fixed. I got this new Polaroid holder and things are back to feeling good. I have to say, man, when you expose a sheet of new 55 and the print and the negative both come out perfect, it is addictive. So I just kept going and I'm sure I'll be doing a lot more of it. Now, I wanna talk about the RZ67 and a light leak I ran into with that uh, and how I um, did a similar troubleshooting method to solve it. So I had my RZ67 for a long time and then I decided to get a six by six back, so a square uh, format back. Um, bought it off eBay, it looked like it was in good shape. Um, the first time I used it, uh, first couple times I used it, I had light leaks. They were pretty consistent looking. Uh, they weren't only at the beginning and last frames, they were throughout the roll. So that told me it was uh, either the camera or the film back. Um, so I already eliminated the roll film as being the problem. Um, now, obviously it's probably the new back I got because uh, if it's not occurring on the six by seven back, but it is occurring on the six by six back, I've just eliminated the camera as being the problem. So uh, again, process of elimination, you just say it can't be this, it can't be this, it must be this. So the six by six back needed new seals. Um, they were kind of worn away and kind of uh, you know, crumbling off like you see on old cameras. So I needed to replace the light seals, but how the hell do you do that? Um, well, you can buy sheets of uh, film light seal and you can cut it out yourself with a real fine razor, real straight edge. It's difficult to do, I'm sure. But turns out there's a website, uh, US Camera, that sells uh, light seal kits. They actually have a lot of repair items for old cameras uh, and old user manuals. Um, but I found um, some kits on there to replace the light seals on the RZ67 film backs. So I bought several of those so I could have some extras. Uh, and then I just replaced the seals myself and the light leak was gone. So easy fix. I just needed those light seals uh, and the proper uh, light seals for the 6x7 or for the RZ67 specifically. 
Um, now, if you decide to uh, replace your own light seals, just do some uh, Google searching. Look at the proper technique to remove the old light seals. You need certain chemicals and you need certain tools to make it happen. I did mine mostly with a toothpick and I think denatured alcohol, if I remember correctly. And then to apply the new light seals, there's smart ways to do it so where you can reposition it and then it'll dry in the right spot. So research that. I'm not going to give you tips on that because I'm no expert on it, but research that. So. There you go, regardless of what camera system you're using, if you're faced with a light leak, try and be logical about it. Eliminate this, eliminate that, it must be this. Uh, and then that way you can get rid of your light leak with minimal gray hairs and minimal hair pulling. All right, there you go, hope you enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.